I am one of seven grandchildren. Um, and on behalf of the family, I want to welcome you all for this uh, celebration to remember, to grieve, and to celebrate uh, the life of Olafe Hinzi, or as many of us will be calling her throughout the service, Grandma. Um, welcome to this worship service of love and light. We have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Olafe Hinzi. As we hear these words from Isaiah, those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Friends, we come together today in grief, acknowledging our human loss, knowing that it is simply yesterday past. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Won't you please stand as you are able for our opening song found on page 707 in the hymnal, or you can follow along with the words on the screen. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember Olafe before you and thank you for giving Olafe to us to know and to love as a companion on our pilgrimage on earth. In your compassion, console those who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call, we are gathered into the company of all your saints by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Hear these words from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, 
and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Hear these words from Mark 10, 13 through 16. People were bringing children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. I'd like to focus today on one verse from that gospel lesson that Jacinda just read for us. Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such as these belongs the kingdom of God. It's my privilege to be speaking you, with you today. My name's uh, Pastor Ben Nicodemus. I serve Central Lutheran Church in Eugene. But today, my credential is that I'm one of the grandchildren. There's actually a few of us who are pastors, but I'm the one whose denomination is in pulpit fellowship with the United Methodist Church. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to extend thanks to Pastor Laura for allowing me to preach this homily at this service. In this gospel reading, Jesus spends time with little children and blesses them. As I spoke with my aunts a few weeks ago about what the gospel reading for this homily might be, we all thought about Jesus and the little children. As many of you know, my grandma spent much of her life with children, such as the years she had teaching elementary school. But for me, my own memory of her and children was rather first person. Myself as a child, going to my grandparents' house and quite honestly, being spoiled. <laughs> All we had to say was, well, what about, or I want, and we'd hear, Grandpa, we need some Cheetos, or whatever it was we said. And pretty soon there was a trip to the, into town, and they'd get whatever junk food we wanted. It was pretty shameless. <laughs> so were we. <laughs> Grandma loved little kids. And that love went very deep in her life. Little children just brought something alive in her, and she'd just light up. At the very end of her life, when she'd become mostly pretty sleepy and really wasn't herself anymore, she rallied a few times when we would bring the great-grandchildren to her. When Zach brought his family to see her toward the end, she was able to be alert, played some games, interacted most of the day. The last time I was able to visit and we brought my daughter Iris, who's four, Grandma really wasn't able to follow the conversation in the room, but she was able to be alert and engaged with Iris. There was something deep inside that would come forward with little children, even when mentally it was unclear where she really was. So we really thought about Jesus and the little children for our focus today. Because we can understand and recognize the way little children are beloved. But I think it's worth us pausing and asking, how are they beloved? What is Jesus saying by blessing them? If, after all, we already all love them in the same way, then is this a very significant point? Well, many of you know that in the ancient world, their sensibilities were rather different than our own. 
And the focus of life in, Gre in the Greco-Roman society was to support and empower citizen adult men to serve, especially serve the state. It was not the best society in the world. Women and children were seen as far less important. Children were held close in the sense that they needed protection and care, but they were not treated really as full members of society. They might grow to become full members and thus were valued for their potentials, but as they existed as children, they were not valued in that same way. They were not full members of anything. And that's probably why the disciples rebuked them. You can almost hear them saying something, well, you know, it's really nice that you want to go see Jesus, but really that's for those who want to have a serious relationship. Why don't you come back in a few years? Just be a kid. Don't worry about all this. Jesus disagrees. He says, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for such as these belongs the kingdom of God. Right where they are. They have the kingdom of God right now. They don't have to wait. And then Jesus blesses them right where they are. And you'll notice Jesus does not say that little children are in fact full of relationship with me because they actually have matured more than you think and they are able to do everything adults can do. As if to say, well, actually you were right about being restrictive. They've just achieved it and you didn't know. No, Jesus seems to recognize their little children. He doesn't say to them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of people. They're not going to be able to do that. They are children. And those little children are in full relationship with Jesus right now, right where they are. Jesus' point here is really not just as to whether these little children are in a relationship with him as one little special category, but rather, how are any of us in relationship with Jesus? None of us are going to be wise enough, mature enough, grown up enough to qualify to be in relationship with God. But this message is, to such as these does the kingdom of God belong? We are all little children before God. How Jesus loves us is the same way he loves these little children, by placing his hand upon our heads and blessing us. I think that's why little children bring something alive in us, not because we cuddle the poor little weaklings who are so different from us, but instead because we see ourselves in these ones who are not so different after all. In front of Christ, we are all children. We all put our trust completely in Christ's action and love in our lives, that we will be blessed. And to be blessed is to hear that Christ is a God of love and life. Blessing is wishing upon another life and health. It is Jesus here placing upon these children life, not death. Today, though, we do recognize that death does continue to reign in this world as it has taken my grandmother. But death does not have the victory. Our God is a God of life. And the life that's given is not because we do a bunch of things to deserve it, but just like the little children, Jesus blesses us anyway. In fact, most of the things we try to do don't actually work out too well. Later in the service, my cousin Zach is going to read the 23rd Psalm. It's wonderful and a meaningful prayer. probably means a lot to many of you. But I hope you recognize how audacious it also is. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know something about little children? They get afraid a lot. They do fear evil when they walk into just a new space, much less the valley of the shadow of death. They are afraid. So are we. But little children, when they are afraid, cuddle toward their security. Probably their parents. 
And in the shadow of the valley of, the, of death where there is fear, when we, like children, huddle to our security, there we find Christ. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And the hope we can have is not about our ability to keep from being afraid, but that it is God who blesses us as the little children who are, that we are. That God is the one who prepares a table before me. God who ensures that goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And God who brings us to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's our hope. That just as little children, we are brought before Christ, and it is Christ who holds us in his hands, loves us, blesses us, and brings us home. Thanks be to God. Amen. Won't you stand as you are able and join in us in singing In the Garden. It's found on page 314 in the Pew hymnals, but you can also follow along on the screen. Won't you please be seated? We are going to hear the wonderful music of Debbie Huddleston as uh, we watch the pictures that the family has collected of Olaface's wonderful life.
Friends, we gather here today not to mourn the passing of Olafe, but to celebrate, to celebrate and to laugh at those pictures of her on the beach and the fun that she had with her grandchildren, to celebrate a life richly lived, a life that has left an indelible mark on each of you gathered here today. Olafe was a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, and a friend. And she has touched our lives in profound ways. And it is fitting that we come together to honor and remember her. Olafe's journey began on March 16, 1931, in Panhandle, Texas. And you can learn all about it in the worship folder as you read the memories that the family shared, and you hear the memories that the family share together here. She was raised by Charles and Leroy and Mabel, Charles Leroy and Mabel Elizabeth Russ. She pursued education, graduating from Panhandle High School in 1948, and later learning, earning a Bachelor of Arts degree from West Texas State College in 1952. In 1953, Olafe embarked on a teaching career at Wyman Elementary School in Denver, Colorado. There she met the love of her life, William Cecil Hinsey, and they married on February 12, 1954. Together they nurtured three daughters, Kathy, Carol, and Peggy. Relocating from Denver to Eugene, Oregon in 1957 and eventually settling in Silverton in 1963, Olafe continued to impart knowledge and wisdom as an elementary school teacher at Eugene Field School until her retirement in 1989. Her passion for gardening, canning, and sewing became cherished traditions that you can see all of the canning jars that the family has placed along here and the beautiful flowers representing her love of the garden. And on each table upstairs are different things that Olafe enjoyed. So after the service today, when you go up to the reception, you can notice the fun details of each different table that honor all the varied things that Olafe liked, like the beach, hunting for agates, collecting glass floats, enjoying the beauty of bird watching. See if you can find all those things on the tables upstairs. And today we are honored to have all of her grandchildren participating in this service. We've already heard from Tim and Matthew and Jacinda and Ben, and now we are going to hear from David and Adam. So David first, and then Adam can come up after. I also want to say a special uh, hello to all the relatives who are watching in Texas. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> uh, I am uh, David Nicodemus, Dave Nicodemus. I am the oldest grandson, uh, and it's an honor to get to share today. Uh, and just as a complete coincidence, uh, my cousin Matthew, who is the youngest grandson, will be sharing after that. Uh, we also are in the belief that they chose the two most handsome grandsons to share. <laughs> I grew up seven miles from grandma and grandpa on our family farm outside of Mount Angel. One Saturday a month, my two brothers and I would have the opportunity to spend the entire day with grandma and grandpa. This was a Saturday that we would look forward to for the entire month. It was our grandma and grandpa Hinsey day. The itinerary for that Saturday would usually begin with arriving at their house around 9 a.m. We would immediately enjoy a second breakfast of old-fashioned glazed donuts, from Roth's Bakery, of course, and Coca-Cola. <laughs> a true breakfast of champions. We would then make our morning plans. Grandma and Grandpa would have numerous ideas, asking us if we wanted to go to a movie, go to Chuck E. Cheese, Disney on Ice, OMSI, and sometimes even swap meets. What we loved 
is it was always our choice. What we did, where we ate, Grandma and Grandpa let us choose everything for the entire day. I remember that food was usually the primary motivator in how we chose to enjoy that Saturday. As young kids, we would want to go to McDonald's or some other fast food restaurant because we had seen a particular kids meal toy advertised on TV. As we got older and our appetites increased, the Happy Meal gave way to Big Macs and Whoppers with milkshakes. But once we hit our early teen years, Grandma and Grandpa started taking us to all-you-can-eat buffets. <laughs> I think they enjoyed the various choices and honestly, the mostly senior crowd that gathered at a buffet for a Saturday lunch. Tim, Ben, and I enjoyed the fact that we could have 17 servings of dessert. I remember most evenings after a day of Grandma and Grandpa Hinsey letting us choose the menu and all the portion sizes, we would usually come home and need a double dose of Pepto-Bismol. Grandma always knew how to make her grandkids feel special. When it was our birthday month, we would have a birthday party at our own home and then a birthday party at Grandma and Grandpa's house. On those birthdays, there would not only be presents for the birthday child, but every grandchild in attendance would also receive a gift. Nobody was ever left out. During my childhood, my brothers and I were diehard fans of the Portland Trailblazers. Don't worry, they'll get it better eventually. We saw on TV that Dairy Queen was doing a special where each week they would have available a special Blazers glass, each glass featuring a different player on the team. I don't remember asking Grandma about those glasses, but somehow she knew we would love to have those Blazer glasses. So every Wednesday for six weeks, Grandma and Grandpa would go to Dairy Queen to have lunch just so they could get two of those featured Blazer glasses for that week. Six weeks of eating Dairy Queen lunch. <laughs> if that's not a demonstration of love, I don't know what is. As I got older, Grandma continued to find ways to help me feel special. Her and Grandpa would come up once a month or so when I was in college in Portland to take me out to lunch. As always, I could pick whatever the restaurant. I would usually choose an all-you-can-eat sushi restaurant at Pioneer Place Mall. Grandma and Grandpa once made the offhand comment, if you would like to invite a friend, Dave, go ahead. Well, the next time they came to take me to that sushi restaurant, I had four Japanese friends very excited to meet Grandma and Grandpa Hinzi. <laughs> when my wife Beth and I lived in Taiwan, Grandma still found ways to make us feel special. When Beth was pregnant, Grandma asked me what foods Beth was craving that she couldn't get in Taiwan. I told her one of them was peanut butter. Exactly one week later, we received a box containing not one, but two Costco-sized jars of Adam's peanut butter from Grandma. Grandma and Grandpa even came to visit us for a week while we lived in Taiwan. They had a great spirit of adventure as they boldly ate foods with names they could not pronounce or origins that they probably better did not know. Grandma loved us grandkids. I don't remember ever hearing her complain about where we wanted to eat, what we wanted to do. She came to our events, our special occasions, and she was always smiling and cheering. I know that Grandma knew and loved Jesus. I know that she is now in heaven with him. She's probably giving St. Peter canning tips for jam and fruit preserves. And I'm pretty sure she's bragging about her kids, her grandkids, and her great-grandkids. So today might be my last special Saturday with Grandma that I get to enjoy for a while. I will always be thankful every day for having a Grandma who always made me, all us grandkids, and so many people feel special. Thank you. <clears throat> the Pie Lady Cometh. 
by Adam Caney. The pie lady cometh to have a good time. For those keeping track, that is, this is two hinsies in rhyme. She loved watching kids have fun while at play, be it her grands in the yard or a park trip that day. And table games were a must for the old Scrabble champ, after, of course, a short midday nap. The pie lady cometh with a nice big warm smile, the one that says, oh, come in, visit for a while. Her kind, loving nature never seemed to quit, along with, of course, her slight feisty quick wit. I'm sure she'd approve of this poem of mine. I'd guess that she'd say, well, all right, just fine. <laughs> the pie lady cometh as a teacher to all elementary kids when they're still rather small. And teacher lounge gossip, the stories she'd tell, and stories of all of her students as well. She had plenty of tales of those young and crazy, and those young at heart, don't forget her friend Blazy. The pie lady cometh inside an RV, with enough from to sleep two, four, or three. A double bed in the back, a loft bed if you're able. As for me, well, I like to sleep on the table. Sleepovers were common when they'd visit us there. My favorite RV seat was a, was a swiveling chair. The pie lady cometh with foods all plenty. Some savory dishes, some sweeter than honey. Tons of fresh fruit, homemade jams that kept coming, which is why, growing up, store jam was so foreign. And all of that fruit came straight from their backyard. My mom will confirm picking season was hard. The pie lady leaves us with memories galore, most of them happy, almost zero a bore. And one sl s silver lining through all of this pain is she's up there with Grandpa, where he'll be saying the same corny jokes he told all of their lives, and she'll react by just smiling and rolling her eyes. All of you probably have memories of Olafe. And so I would like us to open our hearts and to share some stories that celebrate her love of life and her joy and maybe a pie recipe, maybe not. That's <laughs> the family wants this to be a celebration and they would love to hear some stories that celebrate Olafay's love of life and joy. And so uh, I will, I have a microphone. You don't have to go anywhere. You just need to raise your hand and I will come to you with the microphone. Just a note about the microphone, just make sure that you uh, speak into it really well so that the uh, people who are online can hear and understand the lovely stories that you're sh sharing. I saw you first, so. <laughs> All right. And introduce yourself to say who you are. I actually may not really need this microphone, but. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to share, send my greetings from Don Colburn, our father. He said to send his love to everyone here, and especially to the Hinsey family, who was so, so important to, to, to our family as well. Um, he said that um, Olafe and Cecil were such important members of the congregation, and that even though they faced difficult times, they always handled it with grace and dignity. I just wanted to share a few memories as well about your, you, the family growing up with you guys and also um, Olafe. She was such a force of nature, I think maybe is a good way to describe her. She was always busy when we would go out and spend time at your place. It was filled with food and activity and crafts and animals and always, um, always uh, warmth and love as well. It was just a delight having spent all those years with Andy. And the quilts of here, I would assume, is maybe one that the family did. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I do remember so much about the different foods. I remember when you, you guys would make homemade ketchup. I've never heard of anybody <laughs> making homemade ketchup. You would make fruit compote. You would um, had the quilting loom in the living room that would lower, and all of you would sit around and quilt in the evening. Such an a unusual family, um, such wonderful girls, and um, you were blessed, and we were all blessed to have her. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Shelly Sump, and I got to know the family through Peggy. Peggy and I worked at Smucker's during the summer. I was 18 when I met Olafay and Cecil, and I'd like to express my gratitude for how inclusive they were to me during my entire life. Um, I would be invited over and I'd join into any activity that was going on in the family. I remember the preparation for Kathy's wedding. I remember the preparations for Carol's wedding and for Peggy's wedding. It was always a flurry of activity. But the one story I remember is, and I, I've been to the farm so many times over the years, so I don't know when this occurred, but I know I was visiting Peggy there and Olafay returned from the store and she said, oh, I just ran into one of my former students and had a very, very nice conversation. And you know, my math, uh, my head quickly started doing the math, knowing she'd taught for many years, and I'm like, how do you remember all of their names? And she said, I don't. I just call them all honey. <laughs> and that works just fine. And um, so I'm sure there's a lot of honey here today. <laughs> joining us in this celebration, but the Hensley family has been uh, really wonderful to me, and, and her par Peggy's parents have been really important in my life, so thank you. Hold on just a second. For many put it, years, put it really close. for many years, Olafe and I were both due at work 8 o'clock in the morning, so uh, we lived a little so two or three blocks closer to town than she. So I'd always look back up the hill, and she would be coming, walking to work, and I'd wait for her, and we shared many, many trips down the hill. We hardly ever got together to come up the hill, <laughs> but we did enjoy that early morning visit. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Nadine. Barbara? While visiting Ola Fay in the nursing home, she told me I always smile because my smile will make somebody else smile. And if you visit her, you never seen her frowning. She was always smiling, always happy, and she tried to make everybody else smile. Just make sure to introduce yourself. Yes, uh, Ricky and Kelly Burbage. So we were blessed to uh, be neighbors with Cecil and Olafe for 30 plus years. And um, just such genuine people. Um, and I know that everyone here that would know them know, knows that, that um, she always had a smile on her face and he was just the greatest guy to, to work with. We'd work together with getting things set up for the fireworks display, you know, on July 3rd. Um, but anyhow, just uh, very blessed to be their neighbor and to be a part of their family. Thank you for sharing. Are there others who would like to share? Bonnie Jean. Since it was mentioned, I was one of her honeys. <laughs> I was one of her almost students. Um, I was in the classroom across the hall from her, and we had moved away and was gone for a while, and when we had come back, I happened to start attending this church, here where Olafe was. She grabbed my hands one morning and she goes, I remember you, honey, you were at, the, at my school. <laughs> I didn't remember, but she could remember times when we played together in the playground and it was such a great memory. And coming to church every morning, she grabbed my hands and shake them warmly because she said, I had the warm hands and she needed more warmth. <laughs> but we always remember her great smile. Are there others who would like to share some memories? Uh, hi, so I'm Zach, um, and when Grandma had moved to Mount Angel Towers fairly recently after she moved, um, me and my boys were coming through town, and my three boys just love to move and love to run, and Mount Angel Towers is a beautiful place, but those rooms aren't really suggestive for that, and so um, what we did is there was a courtyard behind her room and we played for a few hours. It was football, soccer, baseball, all sorts of different things. And um, we just had a, a great time playing. And um, Grandma really enjoyed watching all the kids play. Are there others who would like to share memories? 
Oh, Nancy, hold on. Give me a hot second. Hi, I'm Nancy. I was a teacher with Olafe, but even later than that, when we were retirement age, uh, we did a chime choir together. And uh, I gave Olafe a ride, so I would go out to the farm and pick her up. And along with aging comes challenges. And uh, so Olafe was about a dozen years older than me, so I started sharing with Olafe. And uh, <laughs> so every, every time we would get in the car to get ready to go to practice, she'd say, well, how's it going? And uh, she was able to offer me a lot of encouragement and support for my age and stage in life. Are there others who would like to share? Hold on, and then I'll come back to you, Debbie. Who was that back there? Uh, my, name, my name is Chris. Uh, Mrs. Hinsey was my first grade teacher. I've been kind of sitting here debating whether or not to share the story that I have because I, I've been trying to work out in my head a way of sharing it without it sounding patently offensive, uh, which, which to my mind it is absolutely not. It's actually a, quite an endearing and oddly impactful memory in my life. We were sitting in class one day, and I can't remember how it came up, but we, I think we were learning about animals. And we were learning about the differences between the various types of animals, amphibians and reptiles and so on and so forth. And um, I've always been known for asking sort of impertinent questions. It's just sort of in my wiring. And uh, I made a comment to Mrs. Hinsey at some point in this class discussion, well, you know, humans are just animals. And I will never forget, she looked at me with this startled expression on her face and said, we are not just animals. And I said, well, you're wrong. We're animals. We're obviously animals. And she just continued sort of looking at me in this quizzical way. And there's really not a lot more to the memory than that, except to say that I think in a very strange way, this instance with Mrs. Hinsey has stuck with me and has been sort of one of those paradoxical instances in life that leads you to a train of unfolding thought throughout your existence about who we are and what we are and what people believe and how we think and what's valuable to us and who we are as humans. And I don't think that I've ever come to a point where I totally agree with her answer or totally agree with my own answer. It's just that that interaction with, uh, with Olafe has uh, really, I can't even describe how much it has stuck with me and how many times it pops back in my head. I'd say every time I drive past that farm, I think of that instance and it, and it makes me smile. I, Maria Stone, I also taught with Ola Faye, really. She taught me to teach. She was better than any of the classes at college. I taught third grade at Eugene Field. Uh, after the first year there, she moved to teach first grade. I stayed another year in third grade, and I moved to first grade. I thought, I need to learn first grade teaching from Olaf A, too. And we had so much fun together and over the years. Thank you for sharing. Before, oh, okay, I was going to say, before I go all the way up to Debbie, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barb, and I was a, a Olafe's Tai Chi teacher. When she and Cecil came to Tai Chi, she was in a walker, walking very slowly, was not very mobile, and I was very worried about t teaching her Tai Chi because she was unsteady. But she stuck with it, he stuck with it, and they did very well, and I, she taught me a whole lot by that. She was always my friend. I think I'm coming towards you, Debbie. <laughs> I gotcha. Here you go. Well, I was just going to say about the food because, you know, that's what we shared is food through all the years. Can you imagine that? Um, I knew Kathy was friends with Kathy from junior high, 
on, and many times our families would get together for a meal. And uh, one instance I remember, mom had made new potatoes and peas. You know how you cream those together when they're new, young ones or something? I don't know. Anyway, and instead of dessert, Olafay said, I think I'll have another helping of that potatoes and peas, if you don't <laughs> mind. And then mom and dad would go over there and they'd make apple cider. That's why I played Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree, because that's a big memory. I remember eating real butter for the first time at the farm. I'm not particularly liking it. I was used to margarine, but uh, it was interesting. And, and then, of course, in later years, uh, the Easy Orchards gatherings for uh, shortcake and conversation was great. So a lot of food memories between our families. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Debbie. Each story that you have shared and will continue to share with the family upstairs and the gathering upstairs is a testament to the impact that Olafe had on each of your lives. Her memory lives in your thoughts, in your prayers, in your hearts, and in your hopes. In a few minutes, uh, a few seconds actually, we're um, going to read Psalm 23. Olafay loved Psalm 23, as Ben mentioned. Uh, Olafay found comfort in those words of Psalm 23. And today we also can find solace that the God who walked with Olafay in life is now walking with her in eternity. And as we face griefs and trials and pain in each of our own lives, we can also remember that we also do not walk alone, that God who is with Olafay is beside each and every one of us. So let the memories that you hold dear guide you forward. Know that love has been sent to prod and to poke and to encourage and to sustain each of you. And in times of grief, know that you are not alone, that God, who is ever-present, will strengthen each of you, guide you, and hold your hand as you walk into eternity. So, Zach, won't you come forward and share Psalm 23 with everyone? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, you are the creator and maker of humankind. You are immortal, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth we shall return. For so you did ordain when you created each of us, saying, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, Olafe where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Merciful Savior, we commend Olafay to you. Receive her as a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Accept her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all your saints. Hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord as we pray together the prayer that we have said for so long together. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able in body or in spirit and sing with us for the beauty of the earth. It's page 92 in your hymnal, or you can follow along on the screens. And now, may the God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of the Almighty, the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Would you, would you be seated as the family exits so that we can... Uh, um, make sure that they get upstairs to the 